So when I was 10 years old, I absolutely loved football. And more than that, I loved Liverpool Football Club. This is a picture of me when I was 10. I'm the one with the Liverpool shirt on, the cute one with the Scotland strip. That's my little brother, Colin. Now, while I loved football, I wasn't any good. You know that thing where you're in the school playground and two people have to pick teams to play against each other? Well, I was always the one who was picked last. But there were other things that I loved when I was 10 years old. I really liked maths, and I totally loved computers. And those other two passions, they took me on a wonderful adventure. I studied the mathematics of ant trails, showing how these small animals can build massive transport networks. I looked at the algorithms behind how they organize their traffic and how they collect food. I studied the mathematics of fish schools, showing how they can escape as one from a predator despite just interacting with a few nearby neighbors. I studied the mathematics of bird navigation, how they interact with each other, follow each other, how they produce consensus decisions, decide where they're going to fly together. I studied our social behavior. I looked at how clapping was a contagion, how when we coordinate our applause after a seminar or after a TED seminar like this, we can move together and coordinate in a, in a a very coordinated manner. <laughs> and this mathematical journey I took has led me all around the world to collaborate with lots of different researchers at different prestigious universities. I have the most amazing job. I get to talk to people about different systems, and then I get to build mathematical models which help them understand these systems better. But the football, though, I never, I never completely gave up on the football. I still played with friends, still badly. I um, watched it on television. I went to matches. But I never really saw any connection between my interest in football and my interest in research. The friends I had who were interested in football, well, they didn't really care about ants and fish and all the mathematical models I did. So there was no real connection there. But then a remarkable thing happened. This. This is my son, Henry, when he was nine years old. He's playing, this is a picture taken from the local newspaper. He's playing against boys twice his size. It turned out that Henry had the talent which I lacked. <laughs> and so did lots of his friends. And I ended up with a bunch of other enthusiastic dads coaching Henry's team, Uppsala EF. And it was really then that I started to think again about, was there a coupling between mathematics and football? When I was training these players, I was trying to see if there was mathematics behind it. And I found a lot of mathematics in football. I started with randomness and last minute changes of fortune. I worked out that about two thirds of a football match comes down to randomness. I looked at vector fields of passing of players, and I could make player forecasts just like we can make weather forecasts. I talked to Premier League scouts about how they could use these forecasts to pick the players that would best fit into their team. I studied passing and positioning. I found out the best places to take a shot from and how to make a passing combination. I studied shots and goals in terms of statistics and probability, and worked out who was the best striker in the world. I looked at passing networks, how teams are connected together, and managers use these passing networks to scout out the opposition, find which connections are, are most used, and try and break them down. And I studied the geometry of the game. I worked out that Barcelona's team of 2010-11 created the most beautiful geometry ever seen on a football pitch. And I looked at strategy and game theory and how they could 
be used to explain the evolution, the constant changing evolution of football strategies. And I even studied the mathematics behind Zlatan Ibrahimovic's incredible bicycle kick against England. There is so much mathematics in football. Uh, since I did all of these analysis, I've had this amazing opportunity to talk to Premier League scouts and analysts about how the game should be played. Most teams now have some form of mathematician who works for them and tries to work out how the team can play better together. One thing, though, I haven't yet been signed for Liverpool. And I thought I'd take this opportunity. Jurgen Klopp, if you're watching, just give me a call. I'm available. This is my daughter, Elise. Um, I finally, when I was going to give a TED talk, I finally got her to sit down and actually have a look at the book that I've written about mathematics and football. Elise is 13 years old, and she thinks a lot about how the world works, just like I did when I was that age. And when I was writing Soccermatics, when I was studying how mathematics and football were connected together, I'd often think about what I could communicate to her. Elise isn't interested in Barcelona's geometry or Ronaldo's shot statistics. What is it that I can tell her about um, the, the coupling between mathematics and football? The thing that I would like to say to Elise and to Henry, and to all of you, is that mathematics is not for some detached geniuses. It's not about picking you, 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 you're going to be in the best team, and other people aren't in the team. Mathematics is like a kickabout with friends. It's about getting stuck in. It's about getting dirty and enjoying yourself. It's about using your imagination. It's about using, it's building up analogies between different parts of the world. Mathematics is something that all of us can and should be doing. Now, often at talks like this, you see someone like me waving their hands about, saying, mathematics is in everything, mathematics is everywhere, way. And I have just done that, and it is something I agree with. There is a lot of mathematics in the world. I showed a lot of mathematics in football. But while there is mathematics in everything, it doesn't mean that mathematics is the answer to the meaning of life, the universe, and everything. The answer isn't 42. It isn't any other number. It isn't some complicated equation that nobody else understands. What I learned from thinking about maths and football was a lot more modesty about my subject. So I can study Newton's equations as much as I want, but I'll never be able to do a Zlatan Ibrahimovic bicycle kick I can study the geometry of Barcelona, but I'll never be able to pass in the way those players can. I can study game theory and strategy, but I'll never be able to manage a team like Pia Sundhagen or Pep Guardiola. I can study as many fancy calculations, make lots of fancy calculations, but in the end, I'll still be that boy, 10 years old, in the Liverpool strip, who can't play football and only has a small insight into this incredible, complex, and complicated world we, we live in. Maths can't allow us to understand everything, not even close. There's lots of things in the world that we'll never understand. But what mathematics does give us, it gives us this edge. It gives us that little extra bit of understanding. It allows us to win just a few more matches than we lose, and that, is why mathematics is important to me, to you, and every one of us. Thank you.